Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about digital controller design. This is our example number two. In this example we will discuss the PI controller design in the digital domain. Of course for that we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our problem. We would like to design a digital PI controller for this plant which is given here which is a first order system such that the Closed loop system has a settling time with a 2% criterion of less than 24 seconds and the steady state error must be zero for step input. And we will use a sampling period of 0.5 seconds. So let's see, let's see what the diagram looks like. This is the PI controller. It's already given in the Z domain. You see a sampling in front and also at the end. There's a hold here and also the plant in cascade. So why do we have now two samplers here? The reason for that is because the input is already given here in the S domain, which is the Laplace parameter. And the output is also Laplace parameter. So in order to have everything in the Z domain, we need to sample in front and also at the back of the PI controller, which is already in the Z domain. So this part, the sample, the hold and the plant together will be the Z transform of this plant. And the sampling for the input and also the output is done by this sampler the first sampler that's the reason for having this sampling here so let's look at the solutions after this so let's look at our solutions after this discussion so we have first step is a design point in this case we have given that the setting time must be less than 24 seconds so we can say let's make it 24 seconds exactly and then based on that one we will determine the design point we know that the design point is in general given by in the laplace domain minus the sigma d which is our real value plus the j omega d now for the omega d and the sigma d we need to use the specifications here now for the real part we can use the settling time criterion because the settling time of two percent is given by four over the sigma d this is by the way an approximation and only valid for second order systems without any zeros. So that sigma d can be now calculated using the 24 seconds here. So we have sigma d is equal to 4 over the settling time, which is 4 over 24 or 1 over 6. Okay. But can we also determine the omega d? Now let's see. Omega d is 0. Why? It's already now crossed over because the only specification after the setting time is a steady state error that means there must be a pole of the origin in the s domain in the z domain that means that means there is a pole at the minus one uh, at plus one so we need to determine then the omega d but there is no overshoot criterion there is no other criterion like the peak time etc so this omega d can be considered in this case as zero you can make it a number so you can say let's put here has some number here in order to get the also the imaginary value but that is not necessary so that makes maybe the calculation also the design of the controller more complicated so we stick to only the real value and that is sufficient that means our design point in the s domain sm is only the minus sigma d which is minus one over six so we take the minus of the sigma d now we continue now by z transformation that's the next step so the exact transformation from the S plane to the Z plane is given by this expression. This is an exact mathematical expression. So Z is equal to e to the power ST and T is here the sampling period. Okay, now to convert the design point, which we have here is minus six in the S domain to the Z domain, we can now use this formula directly. We used in the first example the testing uh, approximation or a testing transformation because that was necessary there since we didn't get any fraction or rational operations in this case we can get directly the value because once we z express a zm which is now the design point in the z domain or z plane we can now just substitute this s of m which is our design point in the s domain here and we also substitute the sampling period of 0.5 seconds so when you do that you get minus 1 over 6 because sm was minus 1 over 6 times the 0.5 for the sampling period and it will give you very close to 0.92 so we have our design point in the z domain also 
So let's continue. First, before we move on, what is this hold? This uh, hold operation is called the zero order hold and it's given by this expression. This is the Laplace transform of this hold operation. So it holds this sampling. So it samples a value here and it's holding that and next time it samples again and holding that. That is this expression when you have zero order hold. You have also first order hold, which will be then more accurate, but it will be also more complicated. Now for the sample, the hold and the plan together, the transfer function in cascade, so this part together, will be then given by this expression in the Laplace domain still. So we have the hold times plant transfer function together multiplied, we'll get the transfer function of GS. That is now given by this expression. You can see the plant and also the zero order hold transfer function together. Now, taking this together and also taking the numerator here in front, we have this expression, which is now our transfer function. Now, we need to make the Z transfer of the sample hold and the plant transfer function. So of the Z of the G of S. So G of Z is the Z transform of G of S. That means the complete expression here must be then substituted in this expression. So the operation here is the Z transformation. We need to find the Z transform of this one, but we, we see the following. Z is already equal to e to the power ST. So e to the power ST is also shown here. So e to the power minus ST means actually Z to the power minus one. So that is a, a very, very simple result. So we can say, let's take this part out of the operation and then use it here for this uh, equation. And then we only take the Z transform of this part. Now for that, we can write down this in this format. So we can say Z to the power minus one. And only thing we need to now transform in the Z domain from the S domain is this part, which is a second order equation. Now for that, you can use partial fraction expansion and then determine the values for that. Or you can look at a table of the Z transform from the Laplace transform and then hopefully you find an entry which will give you this directly. Now there is a table here. It is a really small table of the long table for the Laplace transform and the Z transform. You see in the entry four here in the final one, you see one over S times S plus A. And that will result in this expression. Now we need to recognize the parameters now what we have. We have actually in our form here, one, and this is the A here. That means every, everywhere where I see a, a, I need to make that a one. And also for the T, I will use a 0 0.5 because that was my sampling period. That's the only thing we need to do. So we take this equation and substitute for A one and for T 0 0.5. So let's do that. In addition, I did something else that is to ease in the calculations. One minus the Z to minus one, it can be also written in this format. So you can do that quite easily by some mathematical operation. You get this. So just add these two using uh, common fractions. Now, this is now the Z transform here. You can see that minus one times 0 0.5, etc. Everything here and also from the table. Now we see the reason why I made this change in here. So Z minus one is also here. So we can take this out, so we can divide out. We also see another Z here in the numerator and also in the denominator, because since these are multiplied, we can also cross over this, so we can divide it out. So only thing we are, we are left here is the one minus e to the power minus 0 0.5 over Z minus one times Z minus e to the power minus 0 0.5 and that is a very easy expression now we can now work out this this is just a number and this is also a number so we get here the following transfer function okay this is now the transfer function for the plant sample and hold together all right let's collect them this is our design point and this is our z transfer for the plant transfer hold and the sample Okay, controller transfer function. We need to design a PI controller, a digital domain. So we need to first see what is the expression for that. Now there is an expression like we have in the 
analog domain and the Laplace domain, we have here the K1 plus the K2 times this expression, which will make the P and I together in a summation. But in order to use this in a more convenient way, we need to make this as a one fraction. So let's do that first. The expression of the digital PI controller can be written also like so. So we have now two fractions with a common denominator. Just We just rewrite this first term and then take them together. Here we get this expression. Now in order to also recognize the parameters easily, we can now look at the controller gain, controller zero and controller pole. For that, I need to further simplify this or rewrite this. So this is then the expression. So what we have is actually you multiply out these parentheses you collect the z terms and also collect the constant terms and then make this expression in the numerator. The denominator is very simple, just z minus 1. But for the numerator, you have this expression. You can multiply out this. You can check that this is indeed correct. Now we can recognize the following thing because I want to recognize this or compare this to a standard formula for this PI controller in the digital domain, which is a k as the gain, z, c, which is our PI controller 0, and P, C, which is our PI controller pole. Now, let's see. Let's recognize and compare the terms and we recognize the following. The zero is here. You see that? K1 over K1 plus K2 times the sample period. The K here is all actually in front, doesn't matter, is equal to K1 plus K2 times T. In addition, you see the PC, which is one. So that is already set. So we have actually two equations here. So what you say is then we have two unknowns uh, for the digital PI control because this is Z, C and the K. But we see that we have also here two unknowns here. So let's see what we can do. There are many options to design this. We can select, for example, as we did in the uh, design of the analog controllers, we can select one of the unknowns and calculate the other parameters using the root locus equation. So similar to analog PI controller, we will use or usually take the PI controller zero close to the PI controller pole such that the negative phase contribution of the PI controller is very small or insignificant. So in this case, we know that the pole location is one for the PI controller. So if we take the zero location ZC very close to that one, it will make then very small negative phase contribution and that is what we want. So let's take a value which is then close to that one. In this case, we just selected 0.9. You can also take 0.7 or 0.8. The farther away you go, the faster the response, but also you get more overshoot and also maybe more unstable effect. So this is a little bit of compromise between those effects in your transient response. That means then the following, the ZC, which is our PI control zero, will be 0 0.9. We already know that our PI controller pole is one, so we can now say that this transfer function is already these two parameters, and that is given here. So the only unknown is now the K, which is our PI controller gain. So let's move on and then use now the root locus equation as we did in the analog domain. We can now say one plus the loop transfer function is zero. In this case, loop transfer function is the PI controller in the Z domain and the complete transfer function of the plant in the Z domain. So that will be then DZ times the GZ is equal to zero. We know everything except the K value, which is our PI controller gain. So we can now express the K in terms of the other parameters as shown here. And then evaluate this k at our design point of 0.92. Because this is now in the z domain, we can use this and not the sm, which is in the Laplace domain. So let's do that, which is now shown here. And when you substitute now the 0.92 where we see the zm, you get this expression. You can now simplify this further. You get this expression. And when you now work this out and also take the magnitude, you get 3.187. And that is now the gain for our PI controller. Now we have everything and we can now express the transfer function of the PI controller in the Z domain. Okay, let's now first discuss this MATLAB script briefly. This is the MATLAB script I have written for our simulations to check our calculations. 
you see that that we have first defined a continuous time signal which is the laplace parameter s in this form and also similarly for the discrete time signals for variable z in this form the third one is the expression for our plant which is r1 over s plus one in the s domain and this is the parameter for our sampling period or sample period t which is 0 0.5 this entry this command is very important what we say is the gz which is our z transform of our plant is converted from the continuous to digital domain or discrete time domain so the c to d command will do that the first entry in that formula is the laplace form of our plant the second entry is our sampling period which is 0.5 it's already here and the third one is important that is how you make that transformation and this is in our case zero order hold so we have here the hold operation which is the zero order hold transfer function that's why we use it here if you use a different operation you need to use it here and also add that now from here we get the parameters for our pi controller in the discrete domain so we see the k the gain the z which is our 0.9 and also the pc or pole at one and now together you see the, here the transfer function of the pi controller this transfer function is the feedback and in this command is the close to transfer function with dz so you see in the cascade form you see the dz and the gz which is the complete thing here and that is given by this operation the feedback command works like this this is the forward path so multiplication of the forward blocks that's the first entry comma what you have in the feedback loop which is just one because it's just a wire and the final one is the how what kind of a feedback you have if you have a negative you put a minus one here if you have a positive feedback you will put a plus one here if you forgot that you don't do anything default setting is always in the matlab minus one as negative feedback okay so let's then move on to the simulation results the left side is unit step response and the right side is our locus plot for the z transform you see the unit circle clearly you see also our pole and the zeros for this system interesting thing is of course also the unit step response because we need to have at max 24 seconds as the setting time and also zero steady state error let's see if that is really the case so this one here let me start first with this one because i forgot to say this there's a current location of 0 0.92 here that's this location of the pole here which is our close to pole and that's also what we have done because our design point was 0 0.92 so this is indeed also verified here so moving on now to the unit step response this first label shows that the setting time is approximately 14 seconds or 40.1 that is definitely small than 24 seconds so that is definitely much much better than what we have estimated and our final value is also one so we can see that is steady state error is zero because when you apply a unit step input you must get a unit output and that is correct so we say that this transfer function will do the job for this specific example what you can do is because there's also other parameters like overshoot and rise time the overshoot is 25 percent approximately a little bit larger than that one you can say let's decrease this to maybe five percent or etc that can be done by adjusting the parameters here of the pi controller let's say we decrease this or decrease this or change this value such that you have a better response in terms of overshoot because the overshoot parameter specification was not given but you can still say this 25 percent is too much let's make this as said smaller and then you can you need to fine-tune your design controller all right guys this is our example number two about the digital controller designs for our pi controller in this case we have worked out the calculations and all determined our design point as set using the root locus method we have determined our value for the parameters for the pi controller and then verify this in the matlab simulations and everything is as expected and actually much better in terms of settling time if you have any questions comments about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video take care